We are speaking with the one and only uh, Quebec legend Serge Fiori, and uh, the new uh, or the latest release is Histoire sans parole, Harmonium Symphony. It came out in uh, December of 2020 and already certified gold, and uh, I guess it's on its way to platinum as well. Hein? Je pense que ça, ça va être platine bientôt. It is. It is, you see? We're going double platinum. Wow, and, and what's what's really amazing about all of this is that it is essentially just available on one site on the harmoniumsymphonique.com and wow people love it so we'll start with that no but that that, that is amazing because that's the only place they can get it and they did <laughs> they, yeah. went, they went for it so uh, we're so pleased you know just uh, it worked really well so uh, before we get into the album, you know, whenever I talk to somebody in Genesis or somebody in Styx or somebody in some of these uh, progressive bands, we always talk about how Quebec has always supported progressive rock from the early days. Styx can come here. Genesis can come here. They can do three, four nights in a row. And 30, 40, 50 years later, they will still sell out. And of course, you were part of that scene and, and very instrumental, actually, in making it happen in Quebec. What is it about Quebec that just reacts to this kind of music and just goes, oui, ça c'est pour moi? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. But I think we, um, <laughs> I'm going to say that's stupid. Right? <laughs> we love great music. You know? <laughs> and uh, it's, I think it's the period, like, like uh, the 70s. Uh, for us, uh, it was a, you know, there was a great political thing going on. There was like all kinds of stuff. There was all the great bands in the world. And people need, needed to <clears throat> be together. They needed like events. And like you say, Genesis coming, uh, you know, uh, live on Broadway. I was at the forum and uh, it freaked out. It was, uh, and what's great about that is that a lot of people in the audience didn't speak English. That's amazing. It's just uh, so when I got the idea to reverse the process, uh, when we went all the rest of Canada and California and Europe, uh, the same thing happened. It's, it's like, uh, you know, I sang in French and people uh, all, almost knew all the words, you know. So it's, a, it's, it's fantastic. It's just. Uh, yeah, it is. But, what an amazing period anyways. It's not nostalgic the way I say, I say it, but all the music that was done, all those amazing bands and writers and singers. And, yeah. and like you say, like you say it, it hasn't changed a bit. It's like- uh, Not in Quebec. I mean, the only thing that's changed is that the studio, Le Studio, where everybody came from Rush to the police and that's gone. But being in Quebec in the late 70s, early 80s, regardless of, you know, how we look at the political thing, and, and of course, the Habs winning all the time was just a great place to be, yeah, right? We're back, we're back to that. <laughs> we're, we're back. Well, let's hope. We'll see. We got, we'll, we'll see in a week from now. But I know, I know. I mean, it's true. It's, uh, I mean, hockey was like God. And yeah. Man, I, I don't know if I have it in front of me here, but I grew up living next to Ken Dryden. I think I have an autograph and I have an autograph somewhere here, but I grew up living next to Ken Dryden when they were winning Stanley Cups. Yeah. It was a great, it was a great time to be a kid, let me tell you. I know. And I, <laughs> and I had the chance at five years old to meet Melissa Shaw and go at his house every Saturday. Oh wow. And play in his backyard and then uh we do a si siesta together and then uh, eat this steak at four o'clock and then he brought us at the forum with his tickets you know so oh wow i know that did it for me <laughs> <laughs> it's like I'm, I'm done see uh montreal canadians for me it's, it, it's it you know so I, i'm totally nuts watching it, the game. i'm really into it yeah it, it's been listen it's been it's been a long time but it's nice to see them finally winning so so talk to me about that decision to, to record in French. I mean, obviously you want to get started here and you want to build a market and you look at Céline Dion and you look at some of the other ones, Rock Voisin, but eventually they go, okay, 
I want to be a worldwide star. I'm going to sing in English, something that you've resisted for the most part. Uh, talk to me about that. Was it a political statement? Was it just, I can't write songs in English? Or was it like, no, this is my music and I will interpret it the way I do it? Uh, the first one and the last one. It's, uh, the political, it's not, it's, not a, it's not against English. Okay. It's pro-French. It's, an, it's another approach totally. And, uh, and I felt that, uh, you know, and, uh, and now it's, it's worse than ever that our, our language is disappearing. Our culture is being hit really hard. <clears throat> so anyways, I, I got go. I'm going to do everything I can to be known wherever people want to listen to it in French. I'm per perfectly bilingual. I was raised a big part in English. Uh, <clears throat> it's not that. It's not against anything it was just for <clears throat> the language and it it's a bit nuts because it's very hard to do progressive and rock and roll in french it's really hard to make it sound good it's like you, it's not all not only the, the the meaning of the words but the sound of it yeah so that the was, french sound is great for love songs i mean i don't i don't want to sound well, silly but Love oh. songs and ballads en français or in Spanish, beautiful. Mm -hmm. But, but you know, progressive rock with, with some of those twists and the the the, the phonetics, anglais. Yeah. You know? So that was the, the the I put that in my face and I said that it's uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna try to do it. I'm gonna try to make it sound good. Actually, the first songs I wrote were in English. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, but no. No, 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 no. If I can be successful with the French language, I'll be very happy. Yep. And I'll be very supportive of, of where, where I come from and, you know, what we're trying to achieve. See? And uh, when it started working, it's like, oh my God. Uh, okay. <laughs> Round one. <laughs> so I, I, I because I was offered in Toronto uh, a, a very big contract to translate the that and then do new stuff and go around the world. You know, some of the band were really upset, but uh, I just couldn't do it. It just, I, I felt I would betray me, see? It's like, cheat, I don't know. And, and if, you know, what, what, what fans around the world might not understand was the politically charged context of the time. If you were in 1976 with the rise of the PQ, all of a sudden saying, I'm going to do everything in English, that would have hurt your fan base here. People yeah. would have said, oh, turncoat, oh, traitre, you know. Exactly, I knew that. I mean, but I felt the same way. I mean, René, uh, we, we played for him. Uh, when he was doing all of his speeches in the arenas, we we were I was singing for him, right. and uh, I believed him, and I believed the cause, and I believed everything. The thing that got really bad after that it was like independent. We don't want to end this, and we're against that. And like I just told you, it's not that; it's the opposite. Promouvoir, promouvoir le français, promouvoir les ressources, promouvoir la culture. Promouvoir tout ce qu'on a, on a pas. Puis, you know, then uh, after the years went by, we we're really challenged. I don't think it's like I'm. I'm very sad about <clears throat> what's happening because I, I see see it falling down. I see it disappearing, and I I had the biggest dream, and uh, it's part. It's in my heart. And I don't know how to deal with it. Here, I'll ask you this, and then we'll get we'll get to the album and all and, and the coffret and all that because we're getting straight. But uh, recently, the Quebec government announced that all the buildings are going to have to play uh, Quebec artists, not just French, ten percent English and Indigenous, and, and on the phones. You you know when you're waiting, uh, and some people went, "Oh my God, this is terrible!" And it's like, well. Ottawa has been doing this for years. If you're listening to it, if you're waiting on a phone call in Ottawa, they play Ottawa artists. Um, 
I think it's perfectly fine. Is that going to, is that a good initiative? You see, you just answered it. Yeah. If I call uh, anybody and I'm online in Canada, uh, I'm going to hear English stuff. Right. But in Ottawa, they have Ottawa artists and nobody said anything for the last 10 years and they do it in Quebec and, oh, ben là, c'est, oh, it's like, they don't want to say anything. It's like they just don't want to say it. You know, they know it makes sense. But it's it always, does. It's always the same attitude. It's always like, no, no, they're not French. Uh, they're bilingual. You know, but what about you? What about you? The worst thing that happened to me in the series in Winnipeg, the only city that didn't do the anthem French and English, freaked me out. Yeah. They didn't yeah. smile. You know, and we do it in Montreal. We do half English, half French. So I think we're putting in the effort. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it's it's like a big, big wall. You know, it's like two cultures that just. Ça va marcher éventuellement, I think. But. Uh... On restera plus France. <laughs> Mais c'est sûr, sûr qu'avec. L'Internet, puis le YouTube, puis le, le, les, les podcasts, tout ça qui devient mondial, c'est sûr que je pense que d'autres langues, que ce soit euh, allemand, ou, I think everything is going to start. On, on s'en va vers un. un. Ce n'est pas nécessairement de l'anglais parce que je parle anglais, puis ce n'est pas, pas du, du full English non plus. C'est comme, comme un petit. Uh, it's a little bit. It's a little uh, something. Avec le, The Kid, anyway. Euh, histoire sans parole, euh, harmonium symphonique. Euh, Parlons-en un peu, parce que ça, c'est intéressant de, de revoir et de repenser ça avec un orchestre. I mean, to rethink and restate these songs with an orchestra is fascinating. And I'm from the, the you know, the rock world, and I've seen uh, Metallica and others do it. And it really just changes everything uh, Talk to me a little bit about that in French or in English. I can do both and listeners can use Google Translate. <laughs> no, but I'm, you know, I'm fine with English. Like, uh, it's when I used to listen to concerts uh, with rock bands and an orchestra, something really bothered me about it because it wasn't symphonic. It was like a, the orchestra is accompanying the band, like yeah. the, the background. So it's like, like a synth, it's like a mellotron. Right, they're, they're, they're filling in the white noise. Yeah, filling in the white noise. And then you have the singer and he sings and all that. What's, what's symphonic about it? There's nothing symphonic. So when they approached me, Simon Leclerc and Nicolas Lerieux, they were scared of my reaction because the idea was, we'll do a real symphonic uh, you know, album. But the only problem, Serge, is he can't sing. And then I blew up. I said, that's exactly what I want. I don't want to sing. I want it to be, you know, very symphonic. The whole orchestra, nothing added, not, no rock instruments, no nothing, no drums, just the music. And Simon did the most marvelous job <clears throat> I could dream of. Like, he's just a genius. He's amazing, sweet receptive he's like a great great guy and a ma maestro and uh my god we were so scared we were so scared because we could really hit the wall <laughs> you know we could. it's like uh, so when he started doing demos and i started understanding what the texture would be <sighs> this, this sigh of relief and uh Okay, so then we started correcting, adding stuff, taking stuff out and all that. So by the time we got to La Maison Symphonique, we were kind of sure what happened. But then when I got there and I saw the 80-piece Montréal Symphony starting the first chords, man, I just, it's just... You get excited by this music, don't you? Oh, it's, it's more than that. I'm totally, first of all, I'm stunned. I'm totally grateful. It's like, I, I don't believe something like that could happen. But while listening to it, I'm not even thinking that I wrote the music. Just listening to that and saying, my God, it's just beautiful, see? So I got 
totally enamored with it. And, and by the time we got to the mix, uh, just crying all the time. <laughs> just, oh God. So when it came out, uh, you know, it's a symphonic orchestra and an album and the people start getting into it and getting it and blah, blah, and we're gold and then we're platinum and then 120,000 copies and blah, shit. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even, it doesn't even happen in, in, in the classical world. You know? No. So, and like you were saying before, the, the Quebec audience is amazing. It's just amazing. They're, you know, Quebec audiences are very, very loyal, and it really doesn't matter what band it is. I, again, I like the hard rock stuff. And when you were looking at Bon Jovi and Def Leppard and those bands in the 90s in New York and Boston, the, the shows were half empty and they were coming to the forum and it was full <laughs> because Montreal fans go, I like you and I'm going to stick with you. Point. Okay. Tout le temps. I love that. I just love mm. that. And I'm the same. I'm the same. My favorite band comes in town. I'm totally gone. I'm totally in it. I'm, no matter what happens, no matter, I don't care, man. It's, it's, we love it's the, it. It's the passion. It, yeah, we, no, we love the passion. Now, talk to me about uh, writing music without lyrics or without words, you know, because here we're talking about Histoire sans parole, and, and we're, we're, you've had, you know, songs in the past with no words. How do you get instrumental music to affect people to get there? Because, you know, you listen to a love song and you say, lovey-dovey, I love you, baby, blah, blah, blah. And you go, oh, I love this song. But instrumental music is a different challenge. Um, talk to me about that challenge of getting a song and going, that's going to get to somebody's head and heart. Okay. <clears throat> Good night. <laughs> <laughs> no, there, actually, I think there's two things. You have to be very melodic in the classical sense, in the, in the Italian sense, very melodic. So the, the melody, people just hear the melody, and it's like, actually, it, re it really replaces words. It's just, and very moody. It has to be incredibly moody atmosphere, so that when you listen to it, you don't even know what's going on, but something's going on. It just envelopes you. It just, you know, takes you like that. And uh, <clears throat> it's like a trip. It's like a voyage. Uh, so, so exactly, the sym symphonic version. Simon had, had to catch that move. He had to. So before writing one note, you've listened to all my music for one month didn't write one note. It's just like getting in into it and <clears throat> attaching the vibe, you know? And then he <sighs> went into it because he knew, like he said, got into my brain and <laughs> I said, poor you. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, and he, he went for it. And the textures he did with the symphony, I mean, I talked to you about it, and I have like hair going up. It's like child of well, goosebumps. Yeah, goosebumps. So it's he just caught all the the layers of the of the accompaniment of that music. Uh, it's just amazing. It's just amazing. That's it. That's the way to do it. Um, but in... it was the only piece I wrote without words. Right. But but this album is completely without words, and so it, it, you're you're affecting people differently, and it's got to be interesting because you know there are certain words that that punctuate a sentence or they punctuate a, a, a musical motif or moment, and they're not there, and it's just like okay, well how do we fill that? So how was it? Okay, so let me ask you this then: How challenging was that? Because he listened for a month, and you all got into the spirit and the vibe. At some point, you go. Oh my God, qu'est-ce qu'on a fait? What are we doing here? Or do you just go, okay, j'ai une idée. I got this. I got some ideas. That's it. If that's it, because you're you're so right. Like a word can can lift up, uh, uh, you know, uh, one yeah, yeah. Uh, one passage like uh, like like you can't you, you think you can't replace it. I mean, it's it's like punctuation sometimes. They say you say you know. Well, but then you have to find the right instrument that follows the vibrato of my voice or something that is going to suggest pretty much the same thing. And when it didn't work, 
we change the, the melodic flow of it so it can work symphonically. And it worked. <laughs> Mexico, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's just great work. So how do you feel now listening to these songs that you wrote, recorded, you know, 40 or 50 years ago, refreshed, uh, you know, fresh coat of paint? How does that feel for you to, to re, does it, does it give you the mood to say, maybe we should record some more and maybe I should write some, like, does it, does it lift the spirit and say, hey, maybe it's time to, 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 to do another armonium or do another something, you know, no? Uh, the contrary. For me, it's a, it's a total achievement. It's like, a, I, after that, I, I, I'm not going to tell myself, I'm going to write another good album going wherever. C'est impossible. C'est impossible. Parce que it's a, for me, it's a culmination. It's like, it's, see, I'm so grateful about it and I'm so stunned about it that what am I going to write about? I don't even say, you know, I said pretty much everything. Not everything to the world, but <laughs> to me, my brain, it's like, uh, and just, I listen to it sometimes, the, the, the symphonic, and I get totally lost in it. It's completely gone, like, you know, and that's what I've been looking for all my life, and there it is. <laughs> you know, and, it, and it's good to hear, because I've interviewed so many artists that go, Oh, when I'm done with the album, I never listen to it. I can't listen to myself. I, I and it's so nice to hear you say the difference. <laughs> I don't understand that. But you've heard it as well. Oh, well, many times, but I don't understand it. If you do an album that you can't listen to, why are you getting it out? <laughs> Et voila. <laughs> Et voila. No, I don't get it. I just don't get it. I, and when I listen, I'm not listening to myself doing it. I'm just listening to the song. Okay, I wrote that song. I must have liked it. And the sound and the band and the thing. I'm not, I'm not looking at myself in the mirror and find myself pretty. <laughs> it's just, I like it. We did it. We did it the best we could. So when I hear it back, like a couple of months later, I say, wow, okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. For, sure, for sure, there are parts I don't like. A young kid, uh, you know, talking with a French accent from France, I don't think I want to do that. But, you know, it's, it's and even more symphonic. If I, <laughs> if I don't listen to that and like it, I'm really nuts. <clears throat> you know? Absolutely. It, you know, and, and it's just funny because I, I, I've always thought you know, I put together a couple of tribute albums for, for, for people back in the day. And I always had, I love listening to those albums. because I thought, wow, we picked the best songs. And when you say to me, I can't listen to it. I'm like, aren't they like your babies? Aren't you like proud of them regardless of what they, <laughs> anyway. Um, let me just quickly talk about uh, the eighties for a second. You started writing songs for other artists, you know, Diane's friend and a whole bunch of other ones. What was that like? And, and what's the process like to write songs? Do you write them sort of in your head and in your voice and then they just interpret it? Or do you say, okay, I need to write for Deanne. I need to write for Nanette Workman. I need to write for these people. What would they think? What's the process of writing songs for other people? And, and why did you get into writing songs for other people and not just more Fury albums? <clears throat> Because it's so nice to work with great artists. It's just so nice, you know. It's, uh, but I no, I put. I'm invaded by the person's vibe and the voice. So uh, Nanette, uh, it was like okay. So I, I heard her voice in my head all the time, and you know, uh, fine. And again, it was a French album for Nanette, which is English. Uh, so it better sounded good in French, you know, because she's got an amazing uh, way to sing. And so that's, it's really a challenge, but I do, I don't do it as a challenge. It's, it's like very rewarding. It's very interesting. And then when we do the production, we started putting it together. And it, again, it sounds, I think, pretty good. I listen sometimes to Nanette's album that I do. Just, I just, 
Wow. Uh-huh. I'm loving this, but I, I love the fact that you listen to your albums because I've literally heard 30 years of people telling me I never listen to my stuff. I'm just, I, I love this. This is great. It's like actors saying, I, I never watch my movies. Oh, yeah. Why you go? Why you, <laughs> why do you do it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no. Here, let me ask you about the, uh, the, the, the sort of unexpected successful song. You did the theme song for Just for Laughs which in the early 86 87 it was nothing it was a little tiny festival that nobody cared about and it became massive and your name was part of that massive success um talk to me about that and 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 the fact that serendipity stepped in and to d'un coup c'est immense did you also do just pour rire or just or just just for laughs oh no i started with just pour rire but actually okay. It was the same song. It was like okay. I, we just used it in uh, both languages. Right. Okay. <clears throat> but for me, imagine I was like the, the prog guy, and uh, this and the uh, machine. Team. They approached me, and it, it, it was like everybody's gonna hate me. All my fans are gonna say, "What is he doing? Where is he?" Again, that was the challenge. So I went at the small festival, walked on Saint Denis, and check the people out and check everything and just you know in front of the entrance and I said you know it's humor it's yeah like something. completely devoid of what what you were with you know a prog band prog art and now you're doing humor <laughs> in english and french oh exactly <laughs> but I, am, I love humor and i'm nuts i try to do jokes bad jokes or, you know so but it was again it was the feeling of it it was like a people outside Walking, going to the show. So right away, the the opening team came in. It's like a parade, you know, like a fanfare. Oui. And there. That is, so it's like, so, so when, when you get that first little thing, see? so then you rush at home <laughs> and record the intro and then, uh, then the work starts. <laughs> And it's amazing that it was a, a a throwaway festival when it started. Nobody cared. And then all of a sudden it became the comedy festival on the English side, you know, with Jay Leno and, and Howie Mandel and all these. And it's just like, wow. And you wrote the music. Not a yeah, bad deal. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it was just, but we felt it, you know, because we talked a lot about it. And it's, ama- it's an amazing job they did to get the festival all over the world. You know what? From Montreal, <clears throat> you know, and, beca- and and also the English part of it, bringing all those amazing comedians in Montreal on stage and hosting the show, uh, televised everywhere. Uh, yeah, I mean the, the the French one makes sense in Montreal, but the English one, when you're battling against Los Angeles, New York, or even some of the other cities, Nashville, Detroit, what, and they're coming here. I know. I know, and the other festivals around the world didn't catch up that much like that. Are there other just for last? And I don't think so. No, not franchise, but they, there's other festivals. They try to make, you know, the same thing that just for last did. No, but you can't. It's, it's the greatest. Um, you also scored a lot of movies. Yeah. Uh, talk to me about the challenges of scoring movies. Uh, you know, I, I, I know a couple of friends that do that out in Los Angeles. They sit in front of those giant screens. And they they watch the movie and they go, okay, it needs this. And what's your process on scoring movies? And well, let me, let me answer that first, and I'll follow up after. Okay, well, well, for me, it's exactly the opposite because if I watch a scene and I do something with it, with the vibe, I'm totally out to lunch. I'm completely out. It it doesn't work. But the theme. So, what well, I got a theme. So, and then when the director comes in, he's like, oh, no, that's, that should be in front, that should be in the last scene. And, you know, so I do a lot of music from what I catch from the movie, but I, but I don't put it in the right scenes. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, I, and it's kind of fun because what I wrote for a love song, like you say, uh, the director wants something heavy. Okay, well, Heavy was at the end. Oh, put it there. Put the love song at the end. Go for it. 
See, as long as I could write the music, I'm very happy. Very happy. So let me ask. It's hard and frustrating also because you get snapped, you know, there's a scene that you just love. Mm. If you did and the scene that you love and they take it out, then you want to just kill them. <laughs> I know. Well, hey, listen, at least it's not working for Broadway. I, I was I was talking to, to Jim Valance, who, who writes with Brian Adams, and he's writing for Broadway. And they would get all the music and they would spend 30 months getting it all together. And then the producer would come down and they would put it on the stage and go, yeah, it's not working. Start again. And you're just like, <laughs> and it's so, start. so, so let me ask you about this because you look at the eighties, you look at the nineties and you look, and you look at the last, you know, between the fury and the Sarah's fury album, that was over 20 years. You, you, you seem to be a reluctant artist, a, a reluctant front man. You, you, you like to stay dans les coulisses in the background. Is there some truth to that? You, you, you don't want to be Robert Plant. You don't want to be Dennis D. Young. You just want to be the guy on the back. No, I don't at all. I want to be everybody you just name and more. I don't know. I'm a, you know, when it happened to me, I just love being a rock star. <laughs> no, it's just that I couldn't do live anymore. That's why I started doing other stuff because I got very sick on on, on stage in front of thousands of people and I, I, I couldn't take any it had very strong side effects on me. <clears throat> so you know I wanted to still play music because if I continued shows, man, they, like if I come back with a show now, uh, I'm at the same place. So it's just uh, here I am. Hello. So. so no, no, I, and again, nobody can tell you, no, I don't like uh, being a rock star. I'm more into music and uh, oh, shut up. It's like, it's, it's amazing. It's just love from the people that want to be a rock star. The fuck are you doing? <laughs> being a rock star is, it, it sounds like a lot of fun to me. I've never been one. Um, before we before we wrap up, and, and we mention again, Histoire sans parole, Harmonium Symphonique, available now. It's been available since December. Um, as I mentioned, I think off air, I grew up next to Ken Dryden, and I went and saw all my shows at the Forum. You know, was it it was Kiss and Rush and Ted Nugent? I saw. I mean, I saw everything. But you you played the stage. What was it like to play that barn? That that I mean, it's the Forum in the 70s stanley cup chant i mean that's mecca <laughs> you're in heaven yeah you're just in heaven like for quebec the Colisee, you know it's twenty thousand people and well uh, and i like i was telling you about Maurice richard I, he brought me in the mecca at five years old i got into that door you know, you know and then you saw the forum where all those colors bench and everything and the banners the like Stanley Cup, Le Bagnard, and you just look at that and you go, call you. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then you get into it uh, after, and you come on stage and you watch the people and say, oh my God, I don't believe I'm here. And they're there for you. Yeah. That is such a feeling. Yeah, no. Merci pour moi. You know, so, so. And then you go into festivals. Uh, we did one of our last shows at the... Uh, a carrière in Laval, there was 300,000 people. Come on. Come on. You're in, the, you're in the back and you're looking at that from high and you're saying, what's going on? What, what's happening? It's just amazing feeling. You, but that's art also, because it's a lot of love for your little heart, you know? It's just, it's art, man. It's, just, it's, it's not easy to handle. Well, and well, and here's what I've noticed uh, in Quebec, especially at French shows, uh, French concerts, is the Quebecois uh, fan knows all the words and sings along with you. Yep. You don't see that in Japan. You don't see that in some. What was that feeling like to be standing at the form? You, we know that in the 70s, it was the bastion of Stanley Cups. And then you have this crowd just singing back at you. It was, it, it, listen, it, it was at every show. When I wrote uh, Lucien Parmi Tandot with the ending, who is telling to some? It was kind of a sad word, you know? It was like, 
it's not a big anthem and all of that, but the people started singing it like that, way louder than I did. And, you know, then you, you stop singing and they're singing it and you just accompany them. What do you want more? What do you want more? And then it happened at every song. Yeah. It's like, and uh, I know Coldplay does that a lot. You know, they just, they, they, they do that little thing. Then uh, Chris goes and walks around and then they sing, you know, I mean, he works with that because it's just a, it's just the strongest feeling in the world. That, that, that's why you're doing it. Yeah. You know, like, uh, and again, I see some artists like, oh, they're, they're singing above my music and that's not, uh, I'm sorry, I don't know, I, have, I was having a weird day or something. <laughs> oh God, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> I know, and they, they, they just stop. So, all right, so I'll, I'll start wrapping up here because we, we've done the half hour, but Armand Young basically had three studio albums and, and then you moved on. Um, why were you not able to, to, to continue on, whether you change members or not change members, whether you, 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 why was it sort of three and done? Why not just take five years off and start up again? Because the progression of Harmonium, the three uh, records, were a very, it was a progress. It was three members, five members, seven members, and the music followed that. Folk album, progressive album, and the third, I don't know what I call it. <laughs> <laughs> but, and it was the, the progression of it, and the way I wrote it to make, make something out of it, I was done. I was done. It was like... I said everything I, I could say, I could say with that concept. It's like, no, I don't want to repeat myself. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to. No, the progression for me was great. Right. That's it. I'm not going to do a pop album after Left Dad, and I'm not. What do I want to do? It's like we've done it. And it's, let's leave it as it is. Yeah. No, it's not fuck it up you know it's just like in love. no, no. It, it, it's tough i gotta say because you you look at bands that have had these long careers whether it's kiss or ac dc and at some point you know five six albums in you go what c'est du réchauffé un petit peu look out um for a lot of shows i can understand Wait. because people just want to come in here to hits and have fun and all that <clears throat> when you want to have records to what, what you already do then it's very, very doubtful. See, it's a, the same tricks, the same thing, the same repetition, the blah, blah, blah. No, I don't believe in that. I just don't. Ça, ça, ça marche pour ACDC, par contre, mais pour beaucoup d'autres. <laughs> à chaque fois, je t'allais voir les Rolling Stones. Comme, you oui. me? I don't really listen to the new albums. I don't care. Give me shelter, man. It's like, a, you know. All right. Mean, Pete Richards is going mental, and that's what we want to see. see? Uh, that's live, but albums, it's tricky. It's very tricky. No, so, so. I don't want to try it. I know I'm not into it, and I know it's not going to work. I just know it. So when, so, I, did, uh, when I did Fiori Seguin after Harmonium, right. we were totally left field. But I was allowed to do it then because it wasn't Harmonium. The reference wasn't there. See? so you know that's that's interesting i wonder if a lot of these bands that have had these 40-year careers where people start discussing the albums if they had changed the name of the brand instead of saying this is a kiss album or this is an a i wonder if fans would have accepted later albums differently that's that's it's a question for the for the ages to debate well yeah but again it would they want ACDC. They don't want uh, the new uh, blah blah. It's they right. want it. so. I think we're stuck. See, you're stuck with it. See, so if I would have done it, wouldn't have done Harmonium, I wouldn't be here with you. You know. Yeah. So, so it's the same with every band. It's like, uh, you know, we we're talking about Coldplay before, and uh, I was, <clears throat> and I think 
when they were in their more punk drive machine, the beginning was really interesting. Then they went for a, arena music, you know. It's dangerous. It's just dangerous. Yep. Okay? It not, is. I'm not judging. I'm just saying my road. You know, I'm really not judging. I also also a fire, but I just couldn't bear the fact of trying to throw down everything that was done. And with the and with the symphonic album, it's even worse. I, what I'm going to do another classical album with the themes that I wrote then? Now I'm going to do new themes. Are you nuts? Okay, I can't do that. Uh, you know, you see what you're going to do is you're going to do you're going to do histoire avec parole. <laughs> exactly. So, it's a challenge. Now, how do you get all of that stuff in there with the 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 the, the, with the, the lyrics with the words? Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, uh, uh, random here, but the uh, the last time I spoke to John Anderson of Yes, uh, we had a great conversation, and he he started talking about Armanium and how the band affected him, and and he has what? a great. Yeah. He. Yeah. He loves your stuff. What are you saying? He loves he loves your music. Where did he hear it? Well, he he obviously we, the, yes has been in Quebec many times, and he's come here many times. I know. So he, he picked up the album and listened to it. I guess so. But he 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 loves the harmonium. Suck it, I'm not. On him, so. I know that really touches him. Huh? But, but I mean, everybody, uh, listen, I, I told folks I was going to be doing this interview and they were like, oh, my God, you're speaking to Serge. He's he's the man. I went, yeah, he's the man. You're the man. <laughs> <laughs> wow, come on. That's amazing. That's amazing to me. I love hmm. it. No, no, no. You, you've had a you've had a great impact. And and. Uh, you know, I follow mostly the uh, the English scene. I do the English rock stuff, and I do this English show. But uh, as a Quebecer, I, I, I'm proud that that uh, of what Armanium's done and contributed to our uh, to 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 the province. So, well, well, thank you know, you. That's, uh, now we're not going to talk for the rest of the day. But avec ça, là, là, ça va être entrevue sans parole. Ça va aller mal, ça. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ça. We'll just make a hand sign. On va gesticuler. Um, Histoire sans parole, Harmonium Symphonique, folks. Uh, let, me, let me get the website properly here. It's harmoniumsymphonic.com or in English, Harmonium Symphonic, I see at the end, dot com. Uh, pick it up. It is, uh, it is, it is going to be double platinum by the time this interview airs. So let's make it triple. Let's get a diamond. We need a diamond record. Diamond record. <laughs> Can you imagine if it became diamond? What is diamond in, in, in Canada now? A million? Still a million? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait. Armonium diamant. Let's do it. I'm, I'm all for it. Uh, as we, as my, my tagline has always been, as we say in Montreal, merci. But since you understand that, uh, uh, thank you. It's been absolute, an absolute pleasure. I, I thank you very much. I appreciate the time. You, you gave it to it. It's um, Mon plaisir. Avec plaisir. Avec plaisir. Uh, come, come on, to Quebec. Go, Habs, go. <laughs> tomorrow night. Tomorrow night. There. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> on va la gagner. Don't worry. I know. I, I believe it. Something's weird about this club right now. Something's magical about this club. And it's, but, all, it's all Cole Cofield. I'm sorry. When, when they brought him in, he's so full of joy and he loves so much playing. Because they all have their long face oui. before it came in, and he just opened the switch. Right, and he gave the veterans a purpose because they all looked at him and they looked at his excitement. They said, "We're going to help." The, and so, got to Foley, so got Perry. They're all like, "Oh my God!" And um, Carrie Price, man, is in a zone. Yeah, but how come? What, what, what happened? Cole Caulfield. <laughs> Some mushroom or something. <laughs> hey, you know what? When you look at the Ken Dryden or um, Steve Penny back in the day, randomly just gets in a hot zone. Yeah. That's even, that's that's why you play the games. Even Patrick Hawaii was like totally gone. Two day Quebec City won two games in a row. Right. He gets all weird and does this little clean. 
Bye. Right? Yeah, that's amazing. It's just amazing to watch. You know, that's 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 the magic of sports and music. It's that sometimes it just, something happens and you can't explain it. Yeah. You know. Well, what a great finish to this interview. I know we have to go because <clears throat> you were saying, why didn't you continue? Why did this? Why did that? Because of that, something happened. But it didn't continue. It happened. If you try to make it happen, it won't just won't just like you're right it's the same thing in hockey this club was like completely dead so you're right you're very right they they were dead they were down 3-1 to toronto and then something well cole wasn't there in the beginning no probably deux premières no that's what happened <laughs> yeah and yet we still won the first one uh, but I kind of like the decision. I think it made him hungrier. You're right. You're right. I, I really think it made him hungrier. Yeah. Because when that game three started, they were hungry. They lost, but they were hungry. Yeah. But then they won. <laughs> all, <laughs> all I wanted was for Toronto to lose. Ils ont pas gagné une série en première ronde depuis 2004. Et je voulais pas que les record books pour toujours disent, but they beat Montreal. But they beat man. So that would have drove, driven me. Let them beat Boston next year. I don't care. <laughs> but not my. Je veux pas que l'Astérix soit Montréal. No, we know plus. Boston. Yeah. Go beat the Islanders première round next year. I don't care. Mais pas Montréal. Faut pas que ça soit Montréal ou leur streak parce que ça va ça va finir éventuellement leur streak. Faut pas que ça soit contre Montréal. That's all. C'était weird parce que tout le monde pensait que c'était ça cette année. C'était eux autres. Ah, c'est ça. Puis, euh, good. Moi, j'aime pas Toronto. Ben, j'aime la ville, j'aime les, les, les personnes, mais j'aime pas l'équipe. No, well, no Leafs, no. <laughs> I think I'm going to finish with that. Uh, me too. Merci, Serge. Bon après-midi. See you, see you sometime. Yes, sir. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. Bye. Bye-bye now.